Hi all, and welcome back to our coverage of the Isle of Armor DLC in the Pokemon Sword. Kofu's not quite there yet, he's not to the zenith of his potential. So, we're going to visit other areas of the Isle of Armor to show him the sights and raise his friendship. And I believe, uh, I think it might have been Richie who said, you don't need to do this to raise his friendship, but it is probably the easiest way to do so. So it was Flame who said you didn't need to. It was me who said that it was the easiest way to do so. Oh, okay. So you, you, half right, we 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 all get a bit of credit in that one. Now you see, the reason I thought that was because it was a very smart and profound statement, eloquently put, and thus couldn't be Flame at all. I'm sorry, Flame. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. Although, if we're swapping that, then you can attribute all the pervy comments about Clara's ties to Rich, and then it balances out. That's how it works. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's perfectly fair. Anywho, you may have seen us gathering Galarica twigs as we bop about the Isle of Armor. There's a reason for this, and I can't believe I missed that alone and Diggler. It's just bad sight. <laughs> I caught that after the fact, actually, but whatever. These twigs are necessary for you to evolve uh, Galarian Slowpoke into Galarian slow bro you collect eight of these twigs by going around the iron and they'll always be near a tree and whatnot and you can get this the galarica cuff you give it not make it hold you give this to galarian slowpoke and then boom it will transform the sucker ah you see i just kind of partially because i didn't really actually care about having a galarian slow bro so i didn't bother um but i did wonder what that sort of built up to it makes Total sense. Mm -hmm. I imagine there'll be a similar item come the Crown Tundra for Galarian Slow King. Yeah, I mean... Compared to the old method of it being a trade evolution, that's definitely an improvement, <laughs> although I did notice that when you spoke to the Diglett guy and he gave you the Kanto Slowpoke, it was holding a King's Rock. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So they've got you prepared for that if you so desire to get a standard Johto Sloking, but you know, it's up to you, really. <laughs> you know, what annoyed me the most about, like, trade evolutions, or just trading in general, I suppose, is that um, I asked Tanner, uh, HFC's Tanner, for help getting uh, Zeraora into my Pokedex, only to find out that the fucking thing has no Pokedex entry yet. It doesn't exist. So that was a worthless trade to both my versions. Can I have a little bit of a bitch about how the Zero event went down? Yes, because it's kind of bullshit. Yeah, for some reason, like, they've done things before where, you know, like, there's an event and you just go into the mystery gift and you can just get the Pokemon easy enough. They've done this for ever since Pokemon's been online enabled, really, and it's been fine. This time around, they decided to link through Pokemon Home. But not just Pokemon Home on the Switch. You have to boot up Pokemon Home on your mobile phone mm -hmm. to be able to withdraw the mystery gift. Which is it, just so backwards. It's like they have a system in place on the console, but no, I guess this is their way to like, like this is their honeypot. They want to get you in on the phone app. <sighs> and like my phone, I, I actually got lucky in this in the... This is like the only app I've tried to download on my phone in the last few years that actually works because my phone's like eight years old now. <laughs> and so like if if you haven't got a smartphone, then you kind of shit out of luck, even if you played your part in trying to unlock it. Yeah, I don't think it was the smartest move they've made. I understand the principle of it um, in that they want people to download that blooming app, but... Um, it's kind of one of those things of, yeah, but what if I don't want to? I just want the Pokemon. But, hey, continual poor decisions throughout various things is going to happen. But, uh, yay for level 80 Whale Lord, although obviously it does look completely ridiculous in battle still, because it is <laughs> not to scale. Well, um, when, when you Dynamax this thing as myself and I believe Flame has hmm. done in uh, you know various max raids across the Isle of Armour. <laughs> he took that like a champ I have to say. Um, he basically just becomes the size you see him in the wild and by the by I didn't physically touch the Whale Lord to initiate battle but I guess his hitbox just extends way past his physical form. I 
did notice that when you were going around him, it looked like you were being very careful not to touch him, but it caught you anyway. <laughs> I wanted to show him off and whatnot, you know? You accidentally touched him. I understand. It's fine. <laughs> All right, here we go. Galarian, Slowbro, Poison, and Psychic. The first of his typing, he has Quick Draw, which allows him to move faster sometimes, I believe. And his signature move, this. He basically just goes to Mega Man and shoots out of his arm. It's pretty cool, honestly. You got uh, poison slow bro thing. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> this is what happens when you beat Shelder Man. I will have you. You're coming in this Pokeball, whether you like it or not. See, I got lucky with Quick Balls on both versions of the game that I've played, so <laughs> you, I guess you're just getting the bad luck. Yeah, it's RNG. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Quick Ball is just my favourite way of catching Pokemon because I don't have to bother whittling the health down and whatnot. And honestly, this is why, and I'm not saying they should have removed wild battles from the main game, calm down, but when I was playing Pokemon Go, I didn't miss wild Pokemon battles at all. I was, I was much preferred to just catch the Pokemon, level them up, and fight them against trainers. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Like, there are times where sort of the wild Pokemon is fun, but like, you don't really... I didn't really miss it either, like, just having them as purely there to sort of catch was just like, yes, I am fine with this. Um, which is strange that sort of that's how sort of my feelings go towards it, and clearly yours do as well. Um, See, the thing with the let's go method is that it's an alright concept, just it needs execution that doesn't involve fucking gyro controls or the, like, fucking Joy-Con waggling shit. Because neither of them are accurate, like, you, it's slightly easier if you're playing it in handheld and you can just sort of point like the 3DS, but... no, nah, like, doing it with the Joy-Cons, it barely fucking functions, honestly. Hmm. Well, would you guys be opposed to covering Let's Go Pikachu at some point? Of course I wouldn't be opposed to it. I honestly do find the Let's Go games to be quite adorable and fun. Uh, maybe. I would say that I'll probably want to do XD first, probably because it's a little bit more interesting rather than just Kanto again. But we'll see when we feel up to doing another Pokemon game, I guess. That's absolutely fair, and I haven't actually played uh, XD Gale of Darkness, so that'll be interesting for me. Yeah, because that was one that... We've sort of had on the back burner for a while. We were sort of on and off about whether we're going to do it like toward the end of our Colosseum run, which was one of my favourite ones we'd done, in all honesty. And then we were then talking about maybe we'll do it this year, and then we realised there's going to be DLC to cover, and we don't want to overkill Pokemon, so XD will happen when it happens, I guess. <laughs> Look, we can't overkill Pokemon. It's already oversaturated, alright? <laughs> Yeah, I know, but like, we're not exclusively like a PokeCube channel or something. People do want to see some other games from time to time, too. <laughs> Sonic and Kingdom Hearts it is. <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah. Although, to be fair, I'll give you some credit. Over the 12 years or whatever that HFC's been around, you have finally added Pokemon as a third pillar now. <laughs> well, you know, it's the three-pronged attack. I'm very Nintendo-like in that regard. <laughs> a a three-pronged approach, Aton. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you are kind of missing there that uh, Mario is also a part of the channel as well. Not necessarily as much as, but it's still definitely there. But I think Mario Galaxy, wasn't that my first solo run? I don't know, I don't have like a wiki page about you on hand. <laughs> Fair enough. Of course it had to be fucking raining when I got to the last most gorgeous view. <laughs> yeah, like, poor old Cubfoo's getting a real, like, real understanding of Galar, actually, to be fair, is based on England. The rain's going to be one of the sights you got to experience. <laughs> this is something that is actually interesting to point out. So, um, I believe the point at which you can return to Mustard is where it says Mustard will be really happy to see how you're getting along. However, you can go that step further um, because you can get it where it says you and Cubfu are the best of friends. Um, and that's Basically, I think if you get it to max happiness or you visit all of the spots. Um, so, yeah, that's just sort of a nice little touch. I'd like that feature carried over into games proper. Like, 
tourist attractions or whatever, you can take your Pokemon too and like take pictures of with them and like raise their happiness that way because it's always a thing that sort of eluded me like especially um umbreon and uh espeon yeah like you have to make them happy and then level them up during the day or the night uh or vice versa i guess and i don't know i would just prefer an easier way well the thing with the evolutions that i find fascinating is that because they've simplified a lot of the mechanics in this game they have simplified how the EV evolutions work in some cases, but the kind of counter side to that is that although on paper it looks simpler, it's now a bit more stuff to juggle because the way Sylveon used to work is it used to be tied to instead of friendship, it would be that affection thing on the 3DS games so where you would yeah. just touch the Pokemon and I'm trying to make, not make this uh, yeah trying not to make this sound weird, but the ones where you would build your, your affection up with that. In this game, they've removed that and it's friendship again now. But friendship with Eevee, it's, if it's in the day, it's Espeon. If it's at night, it's Umbreon. Or if it knows a fairy type move, regardless of the time of day, it becomes Sylveon. So it's another thing to have to pay attention to. And on top of that, they've also changed how Leafeon and Glaceon work too. Yes. Because they used to be area specific. And they've simplified that now to just use the stones, which makes sense, even if this game with the wild area early on is probably the one time where that wouldn't be a nuisance. <laughs> you are not wrong. There is actually one area, I think it's the Lake of Outrage in Galar's main wild area, where there is like a, a, a ring of stones, and there's like an elemental stone on each of them. It's actually kind of wild. I'm not sure if they respawn or not. I believe they do actually. Yeah, and I think also they do. I think it's around that sort of area. I'm not sure if it's like that specific zone, but it's around the area where just the evolutions themselves can spawn in the wild oh. if you want to go catch some that just rotates time of day and all that shit, like whatever the weather is. But that also makes them Pokemon a lot more accessible, even if it does make Eevee himself a little bit irrelevant now. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. By the way, if you're looking for a certain Pokemon in any wild area, you don't have to, like, save scum. You can just go into the Switch's internal thing, change the time to, like, a new day or whatever, and the weather should change. And by the way, there's a difference between it snowing and it blizzarding, and it doesn't really look all that different, so maybe just stick to Sorebi, you know? Yeah, and I find it interesting that the glitch with the raid battles where you can change what Pokemon spawns by changing the date, they still haven't fixed that since the DLC comes out, that's still a thing you can do. Um, but yeah, one of the things that is obviously important to remember with the whole weather situation is that I'm pretty sure that um, there is a sort of setup where um, you can get it to be one weather across everywhere in the wild area if you go there on, I think it's like the first of the month and it's it cycles um, on the first of every month. Um, I don't know, I th it should be on Cerebi, but I believe there's definitely a YouTube video which shows you um, what dates you should go to if you want specific weather patterns. Um, because that is going to make your life a lot easier if you want um, specific things or specific Pokemon to turn up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just before we go on to the main event, according to Cerebi, and this is breaking news, probably won't be uh, even available at the time this video goes live on YouTube, but uh, Jesse and James are now appearing in Pokemon Go via a Meowth balloon that can spawn at random chance. Alright, I know they've been brought into Pokemon Masters, the other phone game, and there's been a bit of a... I wouldn't say controversy, but a few people have been disappointed that they're not voiced in that. Although I did also read that their voices will be patched in later. Oh. And it's just been like a bit of a hold up, like recording sessions with like the lockdown and whatnot. Yeah, so. it's, it's a fucking world pandemic. I can wait. <laughs> no, but I need I need voice acting in my video game right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to any other voice actor, but if it ain't Eric Stewart and Rachel Lillis voicing them, I don't really care. Like, to be fair, their new voices aren't bad. Like, I'll, I'll say that Eric Stewart is one of my favourite voice actors, and he's also a bloody good musician as well. He's got a band, the Eric Stewart band, that are fantastic. But, like, I'll say James's new voice is not bad. Okay, 
fair enough. Kobfu agrees, I guess. Who knew he was into voice acting and stuff? So, now it is time. You have to pick between the Tower of Water and the Tower of Darkness or Shadows or something Darkness related. I forget. Now in Shield, I went with Darkness. Here, we're going to go with Water because fighting and water, water and fighting, whatever. Pretty good type combo, I think. I mean, one of the things that... So, the reason that I made... Because I went for the... Um, Tower of Water as well, and the reason for that is because it's, it is the better typing for Urshifu, um, ultimately, because um, fighting in water doesn't have necessarily... I don't know if it's as many weaknesses, or actually no, I think... It, so it has more weaknesses, but it doesn't have any sort of quadruple weaknesses. Um, but also it is resistant to more um, attack types. So, uh, and actually, if you were to put the two up against each other, um, Rapid Style is actually super effective against Single Strike, because Single Strike is weak to fighting itself. Yep, I know. That's why uh, Fighting in Dark is not really the best combo. I would have honestly chosen, like... Well, no, Fighting Electric would have the same problem, really. Yeah, probably, but, I mean, I will say, I much prefer the single strike design, um, but gameplay-wise, I prefer rapid strike, which is really annoying, because you end up with that just going like, but I want, but, <laughs> um, but there we go, these things happen, you don't get everything you want. My decisions, like, I have done both, given I've played through Sword and Shield, but... The way I kind of saw it is the typing of Kubfu for the battles that you're going to go up against. Kubfu is a fighting type Pokemon and it has good fighting type attacks. And so basically the dark type one is the easy mode. Whereas the water one, you know, you you kind of have, have to level it, level it up a little bit higher to be able to just plow for everything. A little bit, yeah. And speaking of levelling up, you may have noticed that Little Britches had a little bit of a growth spur in between cuts. That's because uh, Cub Food needs to be level 70 before you can take on either tower. And you only get one, uh, so make sure you pick the one you want. Don't worry, you will be prompted and such, so it's not just a one and done sort of thing. And I mean, I, I like that they do give you this choice and it is a permanent choice. Um, because these sorts of things don't necessarily happen too often in the games outside of, say, the um, the fossils in the earlier games. So it is nice, um, but equally also there's the part of my brain going, but I want to, you know, climb up both towers and kill everybody in them. Like, for God's sake, that's like... You're going to kill them, Rich? Bloody hell. That's not very martial arts of you. <laughs> 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 It's that whole thing of, like, there are trainers there, and it's the experience, and just, like, I just want that. Um, but, yeah, the other curio with these towers is that you can only take in Kubfu, um, which is what makes them more challenging, and also a large part of the reason why you definitely need to be um, at this high level um, in order to pull it off, because, uh, yeah, otherwise you ain't getting through these towers. You don't think they could have automatically put all the other Pokemon in a box for you or something? I mean, I would have just preferred it if they'd just sort of let you just go through and just... You could only use Kubfu. Um, would have just saved a lot of that faff, but hey... Oh no, you have to put like less than a minute's worth of work into getting ready. Yeah. Oh, it's too much already! Casualise Pokemon now! <laughs> it's casualised enough, you little bitch. <laughs> I will not rest until a single A button press makes me champion. You know, actually, it should be a half A button press. Oh, for fuck's sake, Chris. There you go. <laughs> Richie, on the ball today. I forsake the path of darkness. Water is my life. I'm like 70% of the fucker. Come on now. Well, also, you know, we're following Master Aqua and not Master Xehanort. Well, if we were following Master Aqua, we'd get trapped in the realm of darkness for 10 years and then job to a darkness user, so... Yes, but also, ultimately, you'd win out at the end of the day, whereas, you know, if you um, Master Xehanort, you'd, uh, you'd eventually die. It'd just take you a long while to get to that point. 
Okay, we're going to make our way up through the Tower of Waters, fighting a single trainer on each floor. They only have the one Pokemon. It's like a, a mini gym in that regard. I may, I know people may be disappointed that it's not like a full dungeon and whatnot, but for the purpose of having a single Pokemon go against other Pokemon, I think it works and it's something that could be expanded upon in later games. Because like I said in a previous part, the reason Kubfu works for me as a legendary and whatnot is because you grow with him, you get attached to him, you go around like an area basically seeing the sights with him, like he were, you know, Pikachu or Eevee in the Let's Go games, you go attached to them, yeah. like, as if he were like your starter or something. So this works as a finale for me, but I wish there was a little bit more involving uh, Kung Fu and his Evo as part of the story. It is another one of them things I feel like they were letting you have the time levelling him up as your bonding, and that was like a substitute for more story, which in general will probably work but I imagine a lot of people will also just use candies that they've acquired over the course of doing battles like raid battles and whatnot. It's not a big issue but I think there is a little bit of an issue because obviously when you get Kub Fu he's not that high a level I mean he's like level 10 isn't he? Mm, something like that. And so you've got to level him up 60 levels in order to get in here and if you're not using um, candies, then that is quite a big um, leap to have to go through. Yeah, I'm aware, Richie, because like I mentioned before, uh, in my haste to make sure I was ready for the playthrough, I was not in possession of, let's say, uh, the 99 or whatever candies they gave out. I had them in shield, but... God bless me, I just forgot for swords. I had to do some max raid battles, which are, apparently were derping at the time. They weren't giving the correct rewards they were supposed to, but I got enough candies in the end that it wasn't too bad. And I caught a few Pokemon in the bargain as well, so... Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, I have to say, when I was playing, um, I think the uh, max raid battles were definitely derping because, like, whenever I tried to do a max raid battle in um, the Isle of Armour, they were all, like, level 5. <laughs> And, you know, since I, I don't really go online, um, it was a bit like, yeah, no, th this isn't happening. So I had to go back out to the normal wild area, and they were working okay there, so I was actually you know, able to take on some max raid battles that I could actually win with the computer. As far as I recall, when I was playing, this was still while the Zero Aura thing was going up, so it's like most of the encounters I was finding were level 5 Zero Auras, and it's like, I've beat one, I've done my part, okay, can I just, you know, have some variety here? <laughs> yeah, and uh, by the way, only one of those victories counted, so if you're like me and beat multiple Zero Auras, too bad, thanks for trying, but uh, unfortunately, being jammy isn't what the uh, computer wants here. Also, it's one Zero Aura per Pokemon home account, not game. So if you beat it on both Sword and Shield, you're still just getting one. Well, don't uh, push the boat out in terms of giving the player stuff, Game Freak or anything, I'm just saying. What train are you on? I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> we're near the end now, Flame, don't you worry. Yeah, I think we're on three of five. So basically, we're halfway... If, I'm, if if I've been counting, I'm de we're definitely on the third trainer, it's just I can't remember whether there's five trainers or not. This is an incredibly petty thing, but I would have liked if the dojos had their own, like, a custom Pokeball design. I think that would have been pretty cool. Eh, yeah, maybe. I, it's not really a video, but one thing I do really like about these towers is the music that plays it. It just keeps playing. It is the theme of climbing the tower, yes. including the battles. Like it's only a minor direction thing, but it's it's kind of fucking key, no, you know. <laughs> uh, other RPGs use this when they want like a scene to keep its tone, even while regular gameplay is going on. And one I can tell you the opposite of that: uh, Midna's Lament in Twilight Princess, yeah. which is a beautiful melancholy tune that comes at a really important part in the plot, but every time you near an enemy, which is going to happen because you're running back to Hyrule Castle with Midna at the time, uh, the enemy encounter theme will play, so... Yeah. 
Oh, what is it? Da, 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 da. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's similarly disheartening when you're enjoying such wonderful music. <laughs> I love how just a few notes can communicate so much to people. <laughs> Man, if only they had, like, area-specific battle themes for the night and whatnot, because Jungle Joyride Night is... Mwah, bellissimo is what it is. Yeah, it, it kind of makes it stand out when, like, one of my favourite things about Eggman Land is the fact that that doesn't play. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. <laughs> like, uh, that's one of the things that stood out to me when I was playing through that last... Which was for our run, actually. I don't go back to Unleash that often, I will admit, but you know. Fair enough, mate, fair enough, alright. We're getting ever closer to the final showdown. One more trainer stands between us and the final challenge. Are you ready for this wave that's about to crash over you? Well, Cubfo clearly wasn't, given he was getting stuck on the stairs. Look, he's tiny, okay? Cut him some slack. <laughs> yeah, but he was crashing into a massive hitbox around the stairs, as well as the banister itself. <laughs> the ocean is cruel and unforgiving. I will send your poly world to oblivion. Yeah, I love how it's it's just a poly world. Um, but Tower of Darkness is pretty similar in giving you sort of unevolved Pokemon to take down. I mean, it makes sense, I suppose, considering we've got Kubfu. Um, but yeah, Tower of Darkness, it's a Zorua, a Scraggy, an Inkay, and a Crocorock um, that you have to deal with. And actually, one of the things I spotted is that um, if you uh, obviously do the towers um, in the hole prior to beating the champion, and obviously everything's a lot lower, then actually um, sort of the level that I think you need to be is 30 rather than 70. So obviously that would make the sort of entry level of Kung Fu a lot easier in the levelling up, a lot easier in the grand scheme of things. Um, I really like this tower aspect. I think there should be more like quests in Pokemon that give you a specific Pokemon to use. It could be your own or they could provide it for you and you just have to be like the challenge and whatnot, like five trainers in a row or something. It's kind of like the gym leader castle in um, Pokemon Stadiums 1 and 2 in that regard. Well, Tom, if you're a fan of having to use a certain Pokemon for a certain battle, I've got some good news about Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the most obvious examples of, like, just dragging a game out, I will say. That Master Trainer shit. Because, like, yeah. I kind of get what they were going for, but at the same time, who's going to grind up, like, a level fucking 70 Caterpie or whatever? Especially given those games don't have hold items, so you can't even slap an Everstone on it. Well, there you go. Well, so. So, so people did, um, but what's more important is that, uh, yes, Mustard is here awaiting us at the top of the tower. He's at the top of both towers, so he will always be your final opponent. Oh, don't underestimate this old man. He may be bowed, his age may be showing, but he knows the waters and the darkness better than any trainer on this island. And he's going to teach you a final lesson you won't ever forget. So, this battle here is where having airy race comes in handy. That's my advice here. <laughs> yeah, this is the reason that you want Aerial Ace. Um, because otherwise it's going to be much more challenging. Because yes, he fights with his own Kung Fu. And uh, yeah, this is the reason why you need to be at least level 70 or level 30 when you come into this. Because his Kung Fu will be that level. Um, and it's also why you want Aerial Ace, because it means that you're going to be able to uh, take this thing down much more effectively, because you have a super effective move. Um, but also, can we just say, like, my god Mustard's design right now is amazing. It's pretty great, yeah. Also, this theme is killer. The way that he just had this alternate costume and alternate look that he just pulled out a dramatic moment, it does remind me of the final boss from Coliseum. The, the same kind of reveal there. Uh, a little bit of Master Roshi thrown in there as well. Yeah, I have no frame of reference to who that is. <laughs> well, Dragon Ball Z, mate. And Dragon Ball and GT and Super, etc. But uh, a little bit of information for you about Mustard. This is from his normal training league card. Mustard is the former fighting type gym leader and is regarded as one of the strongest champions in Galar's history, reigning undefeated for 18 
years. His intense drive for strength meant he insisted on discipline, both in himself and in others. His character changed drastically, however, after his post-retirement globetrotting. His sudden purchase of a deserted island added to the surprise of those around him. When asked for his reasoning, he answered with a smile. There are lots of ways to be strong in this world. I want to see them all. The name Isle of Armor was also his idea. So he's the one who can't spell. Makes sense. He took up the way of the fist, not the way of the pen, mate. Come on. Eh, understandable, I guess. Oh, he's so happy. I know. I, when I saw that scene, I was just like, oh my god, it's the cutest thing ever. I won't ruin the mood by reading Mustard's rare trainer league card. We'll save that for later, because for now, we have growth, the Isle of Armor's specialty, the evolution of Kung Fu. And of course, Leon got lost along the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I just noticed the pillows are red and blue. And also, if you look at his outfit, um, he has sort of red and blue stripes sort of all over the place. Yes, look at this. Admire the calligraphy. Take in the handwriting. Look at the Z that we were denied in Gen 6, you fuckers! Yo, I can vibe to this. <gasps> it begins! I kind of wish it would show him evolving in the tower itself, but now we just get the generic kind of evolution screen there. Ah, there he is, my man Urshifu. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Smash is no stranger to Pokemon representation. I think, besides Mario, Pokemon is the most represented series in there for good reason. There's like almost 800 of the fuckers, and it's one of Nintendo's most profitable things. I would hazard a guess that should a rep in DLC Pack 2 be Pokemon related, it will either be Rillaboom, because then you'll have Charizard, which is fire, uh, Greninja, which is water, and Rillaboom, which is grass, or it will be Urshifu, because he's fighting Riot. Yeah, it could work. Like, I, I don't know whether people would be too keen on another Pokemon rapper at this point, though, although it'll probably go down a bit better than more Fire Emblem. Well, you say that, but Incineroar, after the initial uh, fursuit character man guy, was a very fun character to play. And I actually got the uh, Incineroar amiibo recently. It is very well made. Oh, <laughs> good. So, Richie, what's your take on Urshifu, mate? Design-wise, form-wise, what do you think? Um, I much prefer the design of Single Strike over Rapid Style. We know. Because I don't yes. know, there's something about sort of the flappy bits around the ears that um, just don't look right. And actually looking at it, it's what happens is that I think in Single Strike, the headband, ear things stay sort of um, back... But in rapid style, they move forward, and I just don't know. I don't like that bit of the design. Um, well, that's all we have time for now. Richie's terrible opinions aside, he has evolved and reached the next level. But the story's not over yet, guys, so come back next time for more from the Isle of Armour.